we're seeing something globally we've never seen before and it is the best single indicator of a recession the last time we saw anything like this was uh, 2007, uh, just ahead of the 2008 financial catastrophe. We are going into, or may already be in, a global recession. Now that's rare. It's, it's rare when hey, China, Japan, US, Germany, they're all in recession at the same time. But that's what's unfolding. That's a big deal, uh, well, for obvious reasons, uh, uh, because uh, you know it affects uh, basically everyone. But um, there's no life preserver. There's no, you know, you know, it's not like China's going to pull us all out of it with cheap exports or, or Japan's going to, you know, put the pedal to the metal in terms of, um, you know, fixing uh, fixed uh, asset investment, uh, you know, et cetera. So, so that's a really bad sign. So the stock market's saying it's all good. Goldilocks, soft landing, Fed's going to get the memo. They're going to cut rates, the pivot and buy stocks. The bond market is saying no. This is bad and it's going to get worse and it's actually too late for the Fed to do anything about it. Well, a lot of times the financial markets get ahead of themselves and then they wake up to reality and they oh, crash, you know, correct down. So there's a little bit of that going on. But in terms of the global economy, it's often the case that, you know, you look around the world, you know, you've got the United States or, you know, North America, if you want to throw in Canada, you've got the EU, you've got China, you've got Japan, they're all important economies. But they can kind of be in different uh, parts of the business cycle. And it's not unusual for one part to be in recession, but another part of the world is like doing better. So that they use the uh, phrase locomotive theory. You know, the locomotive is going to pull us all out of the ditch, you know, and we'll get going. So it's not unusual to have recessions in the United States or Europe or particular countries in Europe or Japan. I mean, Japan said nine recessions since 1989. I mean, nine. Uh, I consider that one long 30 year depression. And just to be very specific, you know, we just saw US fourth quarter GDP grew at a 2.9% annualized rate. People are like, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and, you know, it's not good by post 1980 standards. It's not good at all by post World War II standards, but post 2008. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. Um, but uh, Again, you have to disaggregate it and you look at what grew. It was uh, inventories were a big contributor uh, and net exports were a big contributor. Inventories are counted as part of GDP, of course, but it's not necessarily a good thing. If inventories are piling up, it means retailers are not buying. The stuff's arriving, and this kind of goes back to the whole supply chain breakdown of a year ago. That's what my book sold out was about. So you go back to, uh, let's say, the spring of 2022. The supply chain had completely fallen apart. And if you were a purchasing manager and you were, you were saying to yourself, um, okay, we're kind of coming out of COVID, we're, we're, we're going to start growing, uh, but the supply chain is broken. So instead of ordering one you know, container, I'm going to order three containers because maybe one will get through, you know, through the bottleneck. So I only want one, but I'm going to order three and hope for the best. What happened was some of that, a lot of the stuff was alleviated, not for good reasons, not really for logistical reasons, but because the consumers slowed down a lot beginning in June, partly in reaction to the Fed starting to hike rates in March of uh, 2022. Uh, and then here come the three containers. So at, this, at, the, at the exact moment when uh, demand destruction is kicking in, your inventory is going to the rafters. So what do retailers do, or wholesalers for that matter, but retailers, they slash prices, that, you know, two for one sales, uh, you know, because inventories are uh, a nightmare for retailers for obvious reasons. Number one, you have to finance them. So they eat up working capital. You could be cash, but now you, know, you got a bunch of stuff in the back office. And number two, it just takes up space. I mean, it, it insurance costs and, and other costs like that. But the other thing people kind of underestimate is that like style, uh, fashion, goes, stuff goes out of fashion. You know, last spring's styles, are not next spring styles. You still got last spring stuff. Good luck. You know, it's it, we're getting close to spring. So you're dumping that stuff. Um, you know, consumer electronics, uh, you know, you got an iPhone 13. Well, everybody wants an iPhone 14, you know, whatever. I mean, you take the point. So, um, so piling up inventories is a very unhealthy sign. It means the retail sector is drying up. Demand destruction is kicking in. Costs are going up because you got to finance all this stuff and your profit margins are going down. So I don't take a lot of comfort from that. But the other thing, to the extent you can disaggregate monthly data, and there's a lot of monthly data, yeah, 2.9% annualized for the quarter, but it really slowed down in December. So it's sort of, it was sort of a waning type of thing. Um, Christmas was a disaster. I mean, yeah, people bought stuff for Christmas, but way below expectations. And again, it goes back to piling up the inventory at the worst possible time. So it looks like the US is going into 2023 
Possibly recession started in December. If not, it starts soon.